Hello everyone and welcome to episode 12 of Two Super Gamers Playthrough Yeast Origin. I am Mash. I'm Zero. And uh, today we're going to be playing some more Yeast Origin as we said moments ago. Um, last time this room was full of smoke and we used the... Oh, poison gas actually. Poison gas, smoke, uh, air in the north northeast coast of America. You know, it's all the same. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were, we lived through it. It was uh, kind of brutal. Yo, the sky was orange. For those who are not on the east coast of the U.S., or at least northeast coast, it looked like the apocalypse had just started. Well, I heard that it went even further than the east coast. I, I heard it went even past America, like to Europe or something. Well, I don't know if it went as orange as it did here. It Like, the smoke did, but it did not go as orange as it was here. Probably like, not, it, the, no. the smoke dispersed a lot by the time I got to Europe. Yeah, the whole experience actually reminded me of something that happened, I want to say, two years ago. There was all of this dust that was coming from some other part of the world, and it was traveling so high up that it was above the clouds, and it was blocking the the view of the sun. And we oh. actually, yeah, uh, I, I think I know what you're talking I, about. This yeah. happened like 2012, right? Uh, or like 2010? No, no, this was like two years ago, dude. It was not oh. 2012, but that happened. And around that time, yeah, like the sky was very murky and the sun looked orange um, as opposed to, you know, whatever. Like you could literally look at the sun when it, normally at that time you wouldn't have been able to. So it definitely reminded me of that. However... I could breathe then. Uh, I did not enjoy breathing when I was uh, when the the whole Canadian wildfire stuff was going on over here because it was rough. Yeah, so I was actually going to comment because last year we went through something similar. Last year it was the California wildfires. Did that make uh, it over here? Yes, it made it over here, and uh, the sun did indeed look orange, but not to the extent that we had a few weeks ago. No. Not to that extent. And holy crap, that was bad. And again, like you mentioned earlier, yes, we could breathe last year. But I think we just need to start getting used to the fact that this is going to be a yearly thing. Because California yeah. consistently has wildfires now every year. It's yeah. not an if. It's a, it's a definite at this point. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I grew up with breathing problems. As I mentioned this before, I had asthma as a kid. Mm -hmm. And dust really messes with me, smoke and dust. So when the uh, a few weeks ago, when the when the freaking sky was orange, I could not breathe in my own apartment. My windows were closed, but I could not breathe. It was hard to breathe. Yep. Luckily, we had a uh, air, air purifier. purifier. So I'm just gonna say this right now on this video to both you, Mash, and everybody else who's watching. Get yourself an air purifier if you live on the east. Actually, if you just live anywhere near forest fires. Anywhere. Or, you know, where forest fire uh, smoke and dust is going to end up. Yeah. Just get yourself an air purifier and save yourself the trouble because it's, it's going to happen next year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we can pretty much say that this is just really unfortunately, but this is just a part of our lives. But yeah, it was, it was hard to breathe uh, outside. Like at first it was kind of like, oh, that's... Oh, that's funny. It smells like a barbecue is going on right now, or like someone's having a picnic or something, and mm -hmm. they got one of those uh, ga those charcoal grills or whatever, you know, people are grilling. But then eventually it's like, oh my god, walking like two or three blocks is very unpleasant. It's uh, really hard to breathe, and I, I, found it, I found it kind of ironic. I, in a grim way, I'm not saying this is funny, but I guess I found it kind of ironic because we spent so much of our time during the pandemic wearing masks before going indoors with other people around us. And outdoors, you didn't really need to wear masks as long as you weren't in a big crowd. And that day, it was the opposite. I was wearing a mask outside and I was thrilled to be going inside and taking my mask off because in the, the buildings indoors would have like, you know, HVAC systems that could filter some of that shit, you know? Yeah. So it was just like, man, that is, it, it feels weird to change gears like that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a wild 
It's a wild set of events that we're going through. Uh, I shared a meme on my uh, on my personal Facebook and stuff. Uh, I think it. Damn it! Who? Which character was it? It was someone just reacting nonchalantly to the fact that we're going through a ridiculous amount of historical events back to back. Yeah. And yeah, as a millennial, having grown up through the 2000s and 2010s, and now the 2020s. It's more like, oh, cool, this is happening now. I guess we just have to adapt again. You know, this episode is off to a very positive and uplifting start, so I'm going to go ahead... Isn't it? ...and uh, continue that trend, because speaking of memes of that variety, you actually reminded me of a good one that's complaining about work and being an employee, especially in America. Oh, my God. Um, I, I just love this great, this great meme that I saw where it was the, the SpongeBob meme where some dude is on fire and he has like the most I don't care expression on his face and the comparison <laughs> point was the the comparison point is basically like this is what it's like when things start getting crazy at work but you've been there for a while it's like yeah whatever dude this is just another day oh my god I feel that uh I used to work at the Intrepid Museum I've said this before many times and I remember standing outside, you know, outside of the actual museum complex at the plaza, just, you know, trying to see if I can get some people to come visit the museum and stuff. So it looked like a cop car was trying to chase another car and it wasn't paying attention to any traffic. So it kind of just went through mm -hmm. and the Intrepid is right in front of a highway, uh, sort of like a freeway highway combo. So the the police van or car was coming towards like my direction going through two lanes of traffic in opposite directions and it gets t-boned the police car gets t-boned and everything just stops and i'm just standing there at the plaza seeing everything happen and i'm just like it's gonna be one of those days isn't it yep where you just get t-boned so that was funny and then I remember having to deal with a person punching one of the aircraft, and I'm just like, why? Why? Why do that? I can't believe I'm saying this, but I don't feel like you've ever told that story on our channel. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it. Would you feel comfortable talking about that story on the channel while I hack away at this? Absolutely. So, I used to be a tour guide at the Intrepid Museum, and... Uh, at several points during the day, you'll either do a tour or you'll be walking through the museum trying to answer questions or give a presentation or something like that. So I'm walking through the, 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 the first level of the museum, you know, just trying to see if I can help some people out. And I see this middle-aged man looking at a World War II torpedo bomber. Mm -hmm. He's looking at it intensely, and I'm thinking he probably wants to know more about it. Let me start approaching him and see if I can, you know, ask him if he wants anything. What a curious soul. He just wants to learn. Yeah. So I'm thinking, all right, let me start approaching him. I take maybe two steps, and this guy takes his hand, turns it into a fist, and then punches the World War II torpedo bomber square on the side. And I'm just there looking at it going... Yes, one of those days. Oh, look at that. A fire monster. It's going to be one of those playthroughs, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, this is this is one of those episodes. This is just one of those episodes. Oh, boy. Oh, look at that. He tried to punch you, kind of like how that guy punched the aircraft. <laughs> he thought I was a, a plane from World War II. Indeed. So I go up to this middle-aged man after he punches the plane, and I ask him, why'd you do that? Like, that that's really dumb. Why'd you do that? And he goes, oh, I wanted to see if it was real. I kid you not. I mean, come guy, on. Let, let's be real. Let's be real. How many times do you go to a museum, okay, and you just think to yourself, oh, they faked this. Oh, this isn't real. Like, how dare they take top dollar for my admission fee, and they're going to be showing us some, some fake-ass crap? Uh-uh. Nope. Nope. Yeah, so that's not often for me because, you know, when I go to a museum, it's usually artifacts and stuff that they show us. So I'm not just going to... The, the first thing is not going to... The first thing that goes through my mind is not going to be, oh, this has to be fake. <laughs> but whatever. To each their own, right? Because people are fucking stupid. 
So I look at this guy and I'm like, so you punched the plane because you wanted to see if it was real. Does your hand hurt? Oh, yes, it does. Oh, so then what does that tell you? The guy just shrugged it off and walked away. And I'm just like, I need to get I need to get security on this guy. <laughs> I, I couldn't even I didn't even have a chance to go to security because security saw it happen. And they're like, I'm going to chase him down. And I'm like, yeah, please do that. Because he, I wouldn't be surprised if he did that again. Yeah. He might just be like a serial plane puncher. Not something you would think you would hear in a, in a playthrough of Yeast. Huh? Not a sentence I ever thought I would say. Yeah. But uh, here, here we are. plane puncher. Um, so yeah. And that's not the only time I had someone look at me and be like, oh no, this thing's fake. If you guys, if you guys ever go to New York and you see the actual, you know, ship, the Intrepid, the aircraft carrier, you would think, wow, that thing is huge. Um, you know, it, it, that, it must have taken a lot of effort to bring it to New York and all that stuff, right? Well, I had this one gentleman come up to me at the plaza and be like, oh, wow, I like the model of the ship you have there. So, mind you, I'm outside of the ship. Like, you can see the ship behind me in its full glory. And this guy comes to me and says, that's a nice model. So my first thought is, he must be thinking about something inside the ship. He can't possibly be referring to this, like, three-story tall, two football field uh, uh, long aircraft carrier that's clearly behind me that has even, like, a spy plane on top of it. Like, he can't be referring to that. No. So I ask him, yeah, uh, sir, what do you mean? Oh, the ship, it's a nice model. You mean the ship behind me? Yes. The, sir, it's, it's an actual aircraft carrier. It's a real ship. No, 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 I know it's fake. No, uh, sir, I work here. I can tell you definitively that this is indeed a real ship that saw its service in World War II, the Cold War, the Korean War. Well, not the Korean War, but the, the Cold War and the uh, Vietnam War and shit. No, 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 I know it's fake. In a very arrogant tone and then just walks away. <laughs> so, of course, I'm left standing there thinking to myself, yep, it's going to be one of those days. Hey, you, you got to respect someone that's not only stupid, but confident. Um, that is a unique beast. I, I actually don't. I really don't respect. So it's a good thing, though, because there were several points in time where I'm like, man, I probably should have been fired from that place because if he had stayed any longer i was gonna tell him no yeah no you're right it's made out of paper mache and popsicle sticks the ship is real <laughs> moron <laughs> like any longer and i probably would have like cursed them out like that yeah that's kind of one of those things you can't you can't just go and do in uh sort of customer <laughs> service yeah you really can't um it was funny though it was a funny experience and i swear to god if one of my supervisors were there they probably would have just been like, let's just go. Come with me. Let's leave. Let's leave this guy alone. Because even they would have been frustrated at the whole thing. Because, because again, we have a lot of uh, former uh, uh, crewmates that come back and either visit the ship, uh, pay their respects to their fallen friends or and or family members that used to work on the ship. Um, and then a lot of them would also... Uh, what's it called? They would volunteer their time. Former crew members or people who used to be part of the Navy or anything like that. Usually a lot of these old men who, again, did put a lot of time and effort into that thing. And for some moron to just be like, no, I know it's fake. It can't be real. Like, that pro that probably would have struck a chord with a lot of them. Like, I'm sure. I lost my friend on this ship. What do you mean it's not real? Yeah, I mean... I, I I was just kidding before because you know for comedic effect about that, but that is something that gets really frustrating um, about working in customer service. Is just you can't. People are stupid. You can't. Yeah, and you can't tell them that. You can't yeah. fire back because, like I don't know. Sometimes someone just has to be like told, like, no, I'm sorry, you're wrong. And we've coddled customers because the way customer service works in this country is like. You know, you you are king, sir. You are not only are you a person, you are no mere mortal. You're you fly above the rest of us and 
just you're so important and everything you have to say is right and infallible but the truth is that people call in customer service and they're not they're not very um they're not very polite they're not very kind and understanding and that shouldn't be the case because it just makes the job of customer service more difficult you know it's kind of hard to provide proper service for someone when they're screaming down your neck or whatever you know they're being belligerent or they're just saying really dumb things i'm sure there's tons of customer service horror stories where i overheard a customer say this oh speaking of um customer ser customers who you know examples of customer things there's a great series online called um customer walked in with which is oh my God. about do you know it i've heard it i've heard a okay. few it's about like somebody walks in with a with a, to a mechanic shop with a problem they're having with their car and, oh my god uh, dude they're so stupid it, yeah the, seriously the, some of the things that people walk in with are just like you know oh my god i can't it, whatever i can't get this light to turn off every time i start the car and i get in and i start driving and it's like ma'am that's like the reminder to make sure your seat belt is turned on is clicked in or something like you know something something very innocuous like that or like my car is making a real noise a real weird noise and i don't know why and the guy like checks under the hood and there's no oil in the car like the car has never had oil changed it's never been serviced it's just been driven since day one. Oh my god it's like yeah that does lead to some funny noises doesn't it I remember seeing one where uh, something about the car feeling weird when driving. Mm -hmm. The guy puts it on this thing, lifts it up, and looks under the hood and like connecting, holding the 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 cable, not the cables, but like the pipes together that help like keep the wheels spinning and whatnot. Was just a bunch of uh, Ziploc ties. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I'm looking at that going. Ah, that's your problem. Like, no, how are you driving around with a car using Ziploc ties? Oh, yeah. Yeah, God, I mean, Ziploc ties... Ziploc ties are actually useful um, for a car. You can use it to hold things in place that, you know... Usually it's just temporary, like, for instance, your bumper fell off because you got into an accident and you need to drive around with a bumper, so you just yeah. zip tie it back. That's understandable. What's not understandable is like very important engine components are left zip tied as opposed to being properly affixed to the car and you're just driving around with that and it's like, yeah, that's that is a, a huge hazard just rolling around the streets every day. Here's my question because I watched a meme lately. Yeah. Uh, well, like not too long ago. Uh, you have a you have a truck driving down the road, uh -huh. and out of nowhere, the left steer the left the top left steering wheel you know the front left steering wheel pops off. How bad does a car need to be that like how messed up does a car need to be for that to happen easily? Because he was just driving, nothing happened, and then boom, it just pops off, and the car that was driving behind him, but you know next to him to the left of him ends up running over the wheel and then flying through the air because of it yeah like how how bad does uh does a car need to be for that to happen it's more common than you think well it's uh that sounds like it could be a loose uh lug nuts um that could very likely be the case if your lug nuts are loose obviously your car wheel is just gonna fall off because there's nothing holding it to the the thing you're just you're just free you're just freely riding around with something that's not supposed to be attached yeah so it's only that, a matter of time before it falls off that's wild yeah um what's also wild is this boss fight i could have sworn that i did some grinding before the last time we got off to make sure we were better prepared for the next boss fight apparently i was not preparing and my our, ourselves enough because uh I'm barely doing any damage. It's it's possible, and it's happened with this playthrough a couple of times, but I might just be fighting the boss wrong. Maybe I have to do it some other way. But, like, yeah, this is not going anywhere, and I'm probably not going to survive this first attempt, because, um, yeah. Oh, my God, that's frustrating. Yeah. 
Have you tried every elemental attack? Uh, I think fire works best because sometimes the platforms go away and fire is more of like a projectile. So I, I could, see. Yeah, so while I, I don't want to be in lava, I could still attack his arm. No. Oh my god, you still took the hit. Yep. Oh my god, Mash! It's okay, we'll be fine. Will we really be fine? No, and worst Probably of all, not. this game really doesn't like let, letting you heal. Not during a boss fight, no. I think I'll be okay for a second attempt because I kind of know what to look out for. Uh, but this could still be a very bad uphill battle. Yeah, we're we're looking we're looking at uh, some difficulty here, folks. This is the this is the Dark Souls moment for the the episode. I was halfway down on my first attempt. I, it's to me i think it's just a matter of you know making sure that yeah no it's not the hammer i thought it would be the hammer it to me it feels like it's just a matter of making sure that i do the patterns really well and don't don't take too much damage from the patterns uh but he threw a little guy out at me damn it you don't have any like water type attacks do you um no the three elements that you get here are fire electricity and whirlwind those are the three that you get. You don't get water-based stuff. There is no water temple. This isn't Zelda, sir. Sir, this isn't Zelda. This is a World War II plane. Please don't punch it. <laughs> oh boy, here he comes with his laser. I love He's doing... Dead. I love doing, like, a really obnoxious kind of customer service voice. And, um... Doing... Just saying... Just calling people sir. I don't know why. I find that really funny sometimes. And I also notice that customers really don't like it when you say sir to them. So uh, if you're working in customer service, my recommendation would be to not call people sir or ma'am because they don't like that. Um, for some reason, to me, it's just polite. But for some reason, most people take that as like an insult somehow. It's like, I don't understand. <laughs> sir, this is a Wendy's. Would you rather? Would you rather call me? Call, would you rather have me call you a fucking piece of shit like I should? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think sir is being very polite and respectful. I agree. If someone said sir to me, I wouldn't necessarily be upset about it. Yeah, but then I again, don't get, I don't. I don't get upset about it. Then again, these we're also talking about stupid people here, because a lot of people who go into customer service, not all of them. Some of them do go to customer service for legit issues. Just that a lot of a lot of people that go into customer service don't either don't like to read, or they want things handed to them instead of like you know actually going through the steps of doing what you need to do yourself, which usually just takes a quick Google search or reading whatever manual you were given or reading a sign at the entrance of whatever establishment you're going into. I guarantee I, you a lot of them have their uh -huh. shit written down. I learned early on like a difference between working uh, between the way customer service works in this country and the way it works in like some other countries. I had heard that in other places customer service has this kind of different approach where it's not like everything has to be hyper basically the customer service agent isn't a butler for the, the, the customer. The customer service agent is just trying to get their task done and you know, once they get it done, they'll get back to you. It might take some time. You have to be a little patient. But, you know, I, I had I heard this great example of customer service in another country, which is like, well, basically, they, um, you know, call the customer service line. They got they got whatever, whatever insignificant problem they have. And the person is kind of like, honestly, a little bit rude on the telephone. But they get their problem solved, and that's it. That's the end of it. And it's not like this whole horse and pony show the way it is in America. God, God forbid you have to put anybody on a on hold for a minute. People oh, get yeah. upset. They're like, no, why you got to put me on hold? Stay online. Fix my problem. Look, I don't like, like being on hold as much as the next person, but I, I like that and just knowing that I, the other person, the person on the other end of this phone has a moment to breathe and actually work on my problem as opposed to having to try to work on my problem and also try to talk to me according to the script and the procedures at the same time. So I would much annoying. rather 
give that person yeah. a moment to fucking breathe and do the job properly and we'll get off this phone faster you know put me on hold for like five ten minutes like whatever you know now some some places you know hold times are like absurd oh god but um especially during the pandemic i remember having to be on hold several times when having to uh get my whole uh unemployment thing figured out that that shit was annoying but then again it, it wasn't just me it was everyone so yeah, everyone i kind of also it all understood once. so it was overloading what their capabilities is that's another thing companies need to get their crap together honestly they're trying to do more with less people without realizing that they're just burning the people they have out yeah or they realize that they just don't care and it's something that really annoys me it annoys me too and a perfect comparison is actually when you think about it what were we talking about earlier a uh, customer walks in and they have a funny noise with their car and then the mechanic looks under the hood and they come to the t come to the the stark realization that actually the car has never been serviced and it's never had its oil changed and it has practically no oil in it whatsoever that's basically what's going on when companies try to like w use the workforce they have and instead of getting more people to help out with existing workload they actually remove people and pay the existing people less because it saves money that way well you're basically wearing your car down you're you're driving a car around with no oil with no gas uh -huh. with a dead battery with no coolant with no windshield fluid and you're expecting it to work exactly as if you had all of those things and just you know were a decent person to your car um i think my whole point of this rant is really to tell everyone guys go change your oil your car loves you and <laughs> you should love your car back and uh also use yeah. your brains please like oh, use yeah. a little bit of like thought process to be like huh this isn't working out the way i want to is there a reason for that did i miss something should i look at the manual should i look at any signs that are on the wall that are guiding me to the answer that i want like please do that you're gonna save a lot of people a big headache later on in life i'm being 100 percent honest no no reading comprehension is at an all-time low i think as well as attention spans i think what we need to do Especially in florida is uh we need to put we need to put all instructions into the form of some kind of uh some kind of pop song picture book or a movie yeah pic picture book a zane a Z zany cartoon what i gotta read words Oh my god, this freaking fire golem demon piece of shit. Matt, tell me, how do your fingers feel? Uh, fingers are fine. Uh, Carpal tunnel hasn't, uh, hasn't uh, set in yet? My, my frustration tolerance is that of a uh, disgruntled customer who's uh, just trying to get <laughs> $5 off on a, uh, in a coupon there that's done been expired five years ago. Oh my god. Yeah, there's a great series. I think we talked about him a while back, and he has a movie now, or sorry, he's in a movie, but there's this dude that pretends to be an IKEA employee, and he oh just god. talks from an incredibly sarcastic, incredibly cold tone of what it's like to just basically, you know, unmask what it's like being, a, unfortunately, someone who works at IKEA. And uh, just all the stuff that you wish you could say to the customers if you weren't going to get fired. I don't There's work actually... at Ikea. <laughs> but I could say that as someone that has had customer service type roles, that is very uh, relevant and very spot on. And uh, he's also doing stuff that's like calling boomers out too, which is fun. Oh, no. Boomers. I think, uh, I think some psychologists have actually come up with a term for boomerism. Mm -hmm. Like that whole idea that boomers have, like, well, if you just save money, you can do whatever you want. And it's like, no, you guys, like, your generation kind of made it impossible for us to be able to make a living. Like, having a full time job at minimum wage does not get you anything. 
Like, it's supposed to, but it doesn't anymore. You guys just eat too many uh, avocado toast. Motherfucker, I eat uh, avocado toast maybe once every other week. You guys drink too many lattes. Yeah, paying $5 every other day for a latte is my problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, I'm the richest person ever, Mr. Musk, buying Twitter and then sending it into uh, an incinerator. Yo, it's yeah. so funny. I'm going to say this right now. If you guys like Twitter, try threads. I'm using it. A lot of our other friends are using it, too. People are abandoning Twitter for it. It's worth it. And especially if you already have an Instagram account, you then you have a Threads account. You're, you're, you're practically set up. Here's my thing it with Threads. And I'm all for sticking it to, to Musk, because in recent times, I just, I hate Musk, like He's most millennials. Asshole. Yeah. Um, I just wish that Threads wasn't made by Facebook, because I also don't yeah. like Zuckerberg. <laughs> Likewise. You know. I totally agree with you. That's the one downside with Threads. But the fact of the matter is... Twitter is, I, I, someone, like, correct me if I'm wrong, please. But if you want that check mark, you got to pay for it now, which is kind of like, it, it's counterintuitive. It's, the check it's mark both. Is, it's both. Some yeah. people still have check marks because they get them because it's like you're legit famous or whatever. But you can also pay for a check mark. But now there's different color check marks, which just essentially Only confuses things. Yeah, it makes everything worse. So, you know. Ah, so you, you would think that someone who's made so much money and ran several businesses would understand the meaning of the original blue check mark. People didn't want it. Uh, people wanted it not because of the status or whatever. Or I guess some idiots did. People wanted it so that, you know, their fans would know, hey, I'm the legit person. I'm not a fake account. For some reason, he, he misunderstood the whole thing. And I'm like, how how does someone who loves Twitter like he does? Yeah misunderstand that whole check mark shit and then decides now i'm gonna have now i'm gonna charge people depending on how famous they are if they're way too famous i'm not gonna charge them obviously i need them on the platform so people use it but it just doesn't make any sense it pays to be famous then on top of that if i remember correctly now you're limited to how many tweets you can send in yeah. a day yeah that's and now the you new have to thing pay. and it's so stupid He's Elon Musk is giving you every reason to not use Twitter at this point. There's there's no other way to say it. I mean that literally makes you not want to use Twitter cuz you're not getting the use out of it anymore cuz you're limited. And um I think it's a paywall situation. So I guess if you pay if you have the Twitter whatever account, Twitter gold account, you're like you have you know, you you don't have uh you don't have that limit like the regular accounts do, but that's just gonna make it less accessible for people. That's gonna decrease the pool of people that are on Twitter more because you know, they can be on it freely without having to worry about limitations. It almost feels like Musk like came in, he took Twitter and he like imposed net neutrality but on just Twitter. Like the way it's working just makes no sense. Confusing packages, limitations like everything uh, is worse about it. I, we got we got to fix that because s some eagle-eyed or eagle-eared viewers are going to be like, no, 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 net neutrality, is, net neutrality is a good thing. What he's doing is taking away net neutrality on Twitter. Oh, sorry, I'm making a mistake. Yes. I, sorry, I made a mistake. that. I, sorry, I made a mistake. I meant to say it's like he took net neutrality away, which I'm just calling back to when that was a big discussion point because, you know, Verizon was trying to make the not Sorry, just Verizon. Verizon, all of them. All of them are in the same league here. They want to charge us more for access to certain websites. And I'm like, that's not what it was created for. The internet was not created for that. I'm sorry. It's really hard to talk and be a, a, a intelligent person at the same time. I'm just saying that, like, basically, that's what that's comparable to what Musk did, which is just, you yeah. know, making this big confusing mess that only serves, you know, him Himself. in a sense, kind of. But even then, not really, because you just paid all this money for this thing and you're just destroying it. So, yeah. Kind of like how we just got destroyed by this fucking monster. Oh, yeah. I feel like if I just wasn't distracting <laughs> myself, I, we, we, were, we were getting close, but 
yeah we didn't quite have the xp that we needed but anyway that's uh neither here nor there thank you guys so much for watching this episode if you liked it please make sure to slap the like button mash the subscribe button let us know down in the comments below are you a disgruntled millennial like us do you feel frustrated do you need help talk to us we'll do our best that's right and we'll uh, catch you guys on the next episode so thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on episode 13. take care everyone bye